Hey everyone, this is Jordan from Madtown Studios, and welcome back to Drawing the Facts. It's been a while, but I'm glad to be back. That's right, you're here back again with new drawings, new facts, and a new face. We had a lot of projects that we were working on. In fact, we're still working on these projects. But after leaving the surgery room, I am pumped to get back onto the show. But before we get some catching up to do, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Madtown community. If you want to make this official, click on the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and share with loved ones. Today, we wanted to do something similar to our Broken Streets episode. In which case we focus on a topic that relates to events going on right now. Since the passing of George Floyd and the uprising of the protests, there has been a lot of questions and concerns over the police force. I know this is a bit of a heavy subject and I know some may have some experience with this. But hopefully after this video, you're able to look up more into this. And hopefully you're able to enjoy this video. So, today's topic, I'm going to give you a history, facts, and some solutions involving policing in America. So, let's jump right in, shall we? Ladies and gents, here is Drawing the Facts. Serve and Protect. All right, let's start things off with the history. Dating all the way back to colonial America, the police force was actually much different and they were actually privately funded. Most towns also commonly relied on Night Watch, in which volunteers were signed up for a certain day and time, mostly to look out for fellow colonists engaging in prostitution or gambling. One of these were actually started in Boston in 1636. New York followed in 1658, and Philadelphia created one in 1700. But because the system was a lot more informal, the watchmen would often sleep or drink while on duty. And there were people who were put on watch duty as a form of punishment. So most likely, any person you hire would at times mostly be a criminal or a thug, which is pretty ironic. However though, this gradually changed as there was the first publicly funded organized police force, which was started in Boston in 1838. The reason for the policing during this time was to protect and safeguard transported goods from large commercial ships. However though, while the North was focused on protecting goods, in the South during this time, police forces were centered on chasing down runaway slaves and preventing slave revolts. It was actually, it was in Carolina colonies in 1704 in which they had the first formal slave patrol. During the Civil War, the military became a primary form of law enforcement in the South. And after the Civil War and during the Reconstruction, there was actually a lot of local sheriffs who ended up functioning just like earlier slave patrols, enforcing segregation. Around the late 1880s, all major U.S. cities had police forces, but most of this actually had to do with businessmen who had great connections with politicians and who had workers who could likely go on strike and disrupt their workforce. And the workers included labor union organizers as well as immigrants. But going back to the political aspect, 
There were police captains and sergeants for each precinct who were chosen by local political parties, who often owned taverns or ran street gangs that intimidated the voters. They can then use the police force to harass opponents of the particular political party or provide payoffs for officers to turn a blind eye. That way, they will allow illegal drinking, gambling, as well as prostitution. This, however, changed during the Prohibition, leading up to President Hoover, who appointed the Wickersham Commission in 1929 to do some investigation on law enforcement. And one of the ways to fix the issue with police officers corresponding to political party ward leaders, they made the police independent and the police precincts was changed so they will no longer correspond with political wards. Also as time went on, technology also became very important in the police departments. For example, frequent printing was implemented in the 1900s, in which case crime labs would gain popularity. And 911 emergency systems was introduced in the 1960s. Now there are some more facts I found out about policing. For instance, a total of 1,627 law enforcement officers have actually died in the line of duty during the past 10 years, which is an average of one death every 54 hours. There are also 135 law enforcement officers killed in line of duty in 2019. Back in the 1920s, they were actually the deadliest decade in law enforcement history, with a total of 2,517 officers died, and an average of almost 252 each year. However, 9-11 was one of the deadliest day for police officers. Texas has the most officer deaths, having lost of 1,731. In which case 72 officers were killed while responding to the destruction of the Twin Towers. I'll admit, those facts are a bit darker. But there are more facts that actually seem to be more positive in terms of police officers. Including this. And currently right now there's over 900,000 law enforcement officers serving the United States. And this is the largest number of officers ever employed at one time. The state with the fewest law enforcement officers deaths is Vermont, at the total of only 23. But did you also know too that the first known female police officer in the United States was Marie Owens? In which she was appointed to serve in Chicago in 1890. And the first Latina policewoman was Josephine Serrano, who joined in the Los Angeles Police Department in 1946. And according to Supreme Court of the United States, only another officer with similar training is in a position to judge whether an officer has used excessive force. Also, the United States police force, compared to European countries, cannot arrest without probable cause in the intent to persecute. While in more European countries, they are empowered to make arrests based solely on suspicion. With some more facts on the women in the police force, Georgia Ann Robinson became the first African-American policewoman in 1916. And Myrtle Siller was the first female sheriff of the United States who was elected in 1920 in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. And finally, Shaquille O'Neal, AKA Shaq, was currently deputy marshal in Lafayette, Louisiana a reserve officer in Florida, and a sheriff's deputy in Clayton County, Georgia. 
He has expressed interest in running for the office of sheriff in Atlanta, Georgia in this year. All right. Now, let's take a break from the facts real quick. And uh, let me just explain as to why I decided to do this kind of drawing. Well, personally, I never really had too much contact with the cops. I mean, maybe a couple of tickets here and there, but other than that, though, nothing really too big. However, though, there is someone who is part of my life who has worked in the police force, who's now retired. But along with that, there's also, of course, what's going on now. As I said before, there really is a big change and a big effect going on in terms of the police force and the community. And I feel like I really want to do something or create some kind of work that reflects on what's going on now and what we probably all need. So as you can see, I have uh, drawn four figures who are all actually one person. Sorry, from the little boy to the teenager to the uh, adult, all the way to the elderly man at the top. In a sense, it is meant to represent a more human kind of kind of feel that we're all under one unit of life and death. And overall, what I really want to do is to, is to show the power of community as well as responsibility. And overall, just looking out for one another. I'll get into more detail later on. But um, overall, that is the reason why I kind of want to uh, do this kind of drawing. All right, now back to the facts. So those are some of the facts on the police force and the history of policing in the United States. But now we're going to switch over to some more facts on the people, the citizens, and their connection with the police. Now this info is mostly coming from PewSocialTrends.org, but here's what I found out. About 9 in 10 officers, which is 91%, say that police have excellent and good relationships with whites in their communities. However, 56% rate the relationship between police and blacks positively, while 7 in 10 report good relations with Hispanics. I'm going to jump into a, another source this time. This one coming from LA Times. In which case they have stated that since the year 2000, there have been more nearly 900 killings by local police that has been ruled as homicide by county medical examiners. Majority were men. Nearly 80% were black or Latino, and more than 98% were shot to death. Men who have been killed has ranged from the ages of 20 to 39. They make up 8% of LA County's population. While white people make up 26% of the population are killed 19% of the incidents. Now, those are just records from Los Angeles. However, 
it doesn't just end in Los Angeles. In St. Louis, it actually has the highest rate of police killings. 18 people per million residents annually between 2013 and 2019. In fact, it's actually one of the main places where Black Lives Matter actually began to grow and develop. Phrases such as, hands up, don't shoot, actually came from the Darren Wilson case, a police officer who shot Michael Brown in 2014. Actually, to add a bit more on Black Lives Matter, it really started after the acquittal of George Zimmerman, after the shooting of Trayvon Martin. Other cases including Walter Scott, Tamir Rice, and Freddie Gray caused international outrage as well. Hashtag Black Lives Matter focus on issues including prejudice, discrimination, social power, oppression, racial profiling, reverse racism, and is an organization for group campaigns. It has started as a hashtag, but now has grown as a global network which has now over 40 chapters worldwide, scattered across the US, Canada, the UK, and growing presence of South Africa and Australia. And while the loss of life is unfortunately is part of the situations involving police work or in terms of involving civilians, there's also the fact of wrongful convictions. The very first wrongful imprisonment case wasn't tried until 1989. Since then, 35 states have had wrongful convention cases successfully tried. And over 300 wrongful convictions that were tried, 18 of the individuals were serving time on death row and would have been actually put to death if we're not for exonerations. Wrongful convicted spent an average time of 13.6 years in jail or prison. That will total up to over 4,000 years total spent behind bars. Before I continue on, I just need to mention that some of the facts I've been giving you are not all current for this year. Some of the articles I've been showing you all come from 2014, 2016, 2018, and even a little before that. I will admit, the research I did wasn't really extended or as detailed. Also as well, I don't want this video to come across as being me being anti-cop or pro-cop. It's not really much about what my opinions are. It's mostly on the facts I'm able to give to you. So hopefully in the end this drawing is able to um, express how I feel about this topic. And once again. Let me know down in the comment section below of how you feel about this. All right, looks like we're almost done. Um, and just take another break from the facts and talk a bit more about the art itself. I wanted to use limited colors for this one. No, it's not because I'm lazy, but it's mostly because I really want to have it represent something in this, in this drawing. So the colors I chose were yellow, red, blue, and black. And if you can see, it starts from the bottom with the yellow and then it goes up to the red, then goes up to the blue, then goes to the black. Almost like a level. And it 
course also it matches well with uh, the figures that I have. As I mentioned before too, all of them are the same person and does represent more of a coming of age generational uh, shift involving the working uh, in as, as a police officer. So of course we have the uh, the little boy who I just realized this the little boy actually does look like Steven Universe that was not my intention I promise but I kind of wanted him to have more brighter colors have a bit more of a yellow to him to represent the innocence as we go up to the teenager we get more of a blue but once again, it has a bit more, a uh, bit more lighter colors, until we get up to the adult version. He is now mostly um, in blue. To represent that he is now, um, is now is part of the force. Then finally, we go up to the, uh, the older gentleman. Who is, mostly covered in blue, but also has more of the black in him as well as uh, a little bit of red. As I said before, yellow represents innocence, uh, but the red too also represents a bit of a mixture of passion, as well as a bit of stress. Blue represents calm, and black, you know, I'll let you folks decide on what that represents. I'll let you interpret that. Now we're going to come to the part where I give you some facts on some different solutions for cops and for the community. One of the projects that I was able to find is called Campaign Zero, which is a nonprofit organization. Funds donated to Campaign Zero is support the analysis of policing practices across country, research to identify effective solutions to end police violence, technical assistance to organizers leading police accountability campaigns and the development of model legislation and advocacy to end police violence nationwide. They have over 10 solutions, including end broken windows policing, community oversight, limit use of force, independently investigate and prosecute, community and representation, body cams and film the police, training, end for profit policing, demilitarization, and fair policy union contracts. Another nonprofit organization is the Marshall Project, which seeks to create and sustain a sense of national urgency about the U.S. criminal justice system. And another organization is called VERA. Institute of Justice. Vera is committed into securing equal justice, ending mass incarceration, and strengthening families and communities. There are also police departments that actually encourage those in the community to get engaged with law enforcement. Some of their solutions include volunteering to help supplement and support officers and civilian personnel in many ways. There's also serve on a citizen advisory board, participate in a citizen's police academy. There's also participating in neighborhood watches, as well as police initiatives, projects and programs, attending community meetings, getting involved in law enforcement surveys, having schools and children involved, and following police departments on social media. 
And for those in your community who like to do more to prevent any crimes, here are some ways from justgive.org. First one is to work, working with your local public agencies and other organizations on solving common problems, setting up a neighborhood watch or a community patrol, report any crime or suspicious activity immediately to the police. And if you have your own little uh, four-legged friend, have them be part of the local dog walker watch. You can also volunteer to help clean up your community by calling your city offices or local waste management company. You can organize to help clean and improve parks in your area. Adopt a school. Help students, faculty, and staff promote a sense of community through your involvement in a wide range of programs and activities. Mentor young people. This also includes big programs such as Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Create competitions and events for fundraisers. It can involve dance, painting, drawing, singing, acting, and more, just to get young people involved. And support organizations to help make communities safer, like the National Crime Prevention Council. Well, here it is, folks. Here is my art for serve and protect. And these are some of my facts I've researched for this video. If you'd like to learn more, check down in the description box below and check out some of the sites. Now, I think because this topic is leading to a lot of discussion. So let me know down in the comment section below about what you think about the police force, the events that occurred, experience, or any solutions. And this is for everyone. Those who have experience, those who don't have experience, those who might have know someone who's in the law enforcement, or those who are in law enforcement. I would love to know what you folks think. And I would also like to know what you think of this drawing or this video. If you like this, tap the thumbs up button. And of course, share with friends and family. Also, if you'd like to check out more of our stuff from Madtown, check us out on social media, as well as our stores. And finally, join the Madtown community and click that subscribe button. Well. I hope you folks tune in for our next video as we go under the sea. Until then, stay healthy and happy. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Jordan from Mad Town Studios. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be putting up new content each month down below in the comments if you have any questions for me or if you have any uh, recommendations of what I should draw, please let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more updates from Madtown Studios, tap that subscribe button down below. Well, see you next time. Peace.